It's amazing thinking that this space is going to be demolished. It's really unfortunate. On the invitation of faculty member Paul Farber, I've been asked to kind of respond to some of the conditions of economic gentrification and collapse and change that is apparent on Lancaster Avenue. You could think of the archive and the monument as two, two geometries, two, uh, with two epistemologies, two ways of managing knowledge in the world. It has the shape of an archive, it's the use as a monument. Uh -huh. Is that right? It's closer, yeah, and actually in your description I was just thinking that it's very similar to a function of Catholic relics. You have a narrative that you're sort of claiming matters in these contexts. It's not, it doesn't sound like you're saying this is the only story or this is the only thing that matters. The stuff that you're holding on to is in its nature not valued. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's, that's a, that's a really powerful, to me that's a powerful kind of balance against the notion of like, but what about the community? As we imagine how to represent Lancaster Ave, thinking about this space as possibly one to work with because we could do something monumental but also uh, temporary and having multiple access points for the different class projects. What I like about this space is that you can create a really like simple even scaled down presentation that would be insanely dramatic. If you did a hushed lighting situation and it was like As a class, we were asked to produce this postcard of about 400 words that describe the history and the context of the piece of rubble, the community, the conditions of it now, and also give a little bit of insight into the future of the, the space. What are 
are some of the, uh, do you think, some of our goals of this assignment? Or what did you think is a kind of a goal or even a challenge? It's inter entertaining, but informative. I felt very uncomfortable looking for the sort of for the historical information because I felt like I was looking for something to write about. Relationships between how the space is now and its history. Yeah. What information would be interesting or not? Is it better actually to not have stories? Having, I guess, this picture of where the 12-year-old likes to hang out, it, it would take me back to where I used to hang out as a 12-year-old. I mean, this rubble can look so similar to rubble across the nation, but by the categorizing and by like the small narratives, like that's how like something is constructed. for you guys. What is worth collecting? Why do you guys collect the things that you do? I collect uh, <coughs> like uh, glasses, uh, lenses. Because when I was a kid, I used to go on vacation a lot and we would like uh, get glasses from the uh, places and they would like be different colors and different sizes. So it would, like reminds me of my childhood. <laughs> 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 and, like, wow. The fun that I used to have when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I collect headbands. I like all the colors and all the different ribbons and whatnot. A couple years ago, stores were talking about like they weren't going to take pennies anymore. So I just started getting all of them. So you're a penny hoarder. This is in such a beginning phase. You know, is there anything that you think I should think about also moving forward? So you collect the leaves for memories of building, but we have Google, the awesome internet service that shows us the history <laughs> of the building, and we have a rock. <laughs> are you afraid that the people are going to take the rocks out and then just bring the box back? Wow, I don't I know. About that, actually. Most of the time, history is just seen through textbooks and it's not really told by the people. So if you have like people say stuff through your, your artwork and think it'd be better recorded and more accurate than you can see like the real effects. I think the era of kind of romanticizing the artist is over, that they're not some kind of paragon or, or clairvoyant. They can be, but they, they have to act in other ways as well. I'm paid to produce knowledge. I'm paid to communicate knowledge. I'm paid to make discourse. And so it's very easy for me to discover that those are the right things to do. <laughs> How do you change the mindsets of individuals to not want to be part of that system that inevitably oppresses them. What makes a difference? Living intensely.
the scope of this exhibit, and I'm also really proud. I'm like seeing people just grab, grabbing the postcards off the rack, and it's like they're gonna they're gonna see our work. Yeah. For everything they find, they have I'm really impressed with the coherence of the voice because even though it's a it's a collaborative project with students. It's super coherent. It models the kind of inter interdisciplinary practice that I would like to, to do myself and try to do myself. And this, this succeeding makes it easier for me to do that. I want to say that I really liked the video in the back corner that was just playing drive arounds of this area. Yeah. I felt kind of like a cat looking at an aquarium, but I also <laughs> felt like I kind of wanted that video for 20 years from now so I could go, oh, I remember yeah. walking there. <laughs>